orchestra and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Army Air Base at Gardner Field near Taft, California, we bring you our master of ceremonies, the one and only... Oh, no, you don't, bud. No, you don't. You ain't pushing just anybody off on us. Hmm? What are you talking about, soldier? What am I talking about? You tell him, Sarge. Go ahead, tell him. Okay. Look, fatso. <laughs> Now, we can't do anything about what time they make us go to bed or what time they make us get up. But week after week, they blow a bugle, line us up, march us into this hall to listen to what they call entertainment, and we're sick of it. Now, wait a minute, fellas. You keep out of this, Bob. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, as I was saying, Fatso, the fellas here appointed us as a committee to sort of pass on the entertainment, see? Yeah. In that way, why, we protect our boys from stepping into those civilian booby traps. <laughs> booby traps? So listen, Chubby, you tell us who you're going to bring out here, and we'll tell you if it's okay. Well, all right, if you must know, it's none other than Jack Benny. Jack Benny, huh? What do you think, Sarge? I don't know. What do you think? Well, it's either him or spending a half hour in Taft. <laughs> Oh, let's give him a break. Maybe he brought some dames with him. <laughs> okay, Blubber, you can bring on your star. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Army Air Base at Gardner Field near Taft, California, we bring you the one and only Jack Benny. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, isn't it nice being out here at Gardner Field, situated on the shores of beautiful Lake Buena Vista? <laughs> Imagine being stationed in a place where you can go trout fishing, swimming, and diving. <laughs> oh, hubba, hubba, hubba. What do you mean, hubba, hubba, hubba? What was wrong with that joke? What was wrong with it? That joke wilted the flowers on Colonel Bechtel's desk. <laughs> oh, stop being so silly at joke wilting flowers. That's impossible. I don't mind you guys standing around, but don't make up a Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. How are you? Glad you got here, Mary. Now, maybe we can get on with the show. Yeah, but you know, Jack, the strangest thing happened just now. Really? What was it? As I walked in here, the flowers in my hair wilted. <laughs> that I can't understand at all. Anyway, Mary, how do you like being up here at Gardner Field? Oh, swell. But yesterday, when we got here, one of the soldiers rushed me over to see Lake Buena Vista. Some excitement. Well, they're, they're proud of Buena Vista, Mary. That's a beautiful lake. Go on. I've seen more water at W.C. Seal's party. <laughs> oh, stop exaggerating. It's the only lake where a girl can go out for a boat ride and walk back. <laughs> Mary, it isn't that shallow. Then how come the fish are sunburned on one side? <laughs> Mary, please, isn't there anything else you can talk about? Oh, sure. You know, Jack, last night I was out with a soldier look, and... Look, look, Mary, on every program you hear about the girl going out with a soldier. So let's not have any of that on our show. But, Jack, last night I was out with a soldier. Mary, I don't want you Let to... Her Let her talk! Let her talk! Thanks, fellas. Now, as I was saying, Jack, last night I was out with a soldier, and just because I wouldn't give him a kiss... He said he was going to end it all. And then he laid down on the railroad track. Oh, well, don't worry about it, Mary. I've heard about the train service around here. <laughs> but, Jack, that soldier... Mary, don't worry about him. By the time a train gets here, the war will be over. He'll be a civilian. 
And when he's paying for his own clothes again, he ain't gonna lie down on any dirty old railroad track. <laughs> Let's forget about it and get on with the show. Come in. Mr. Penny? Yes? On behalf of the United States Army Air Force stationed at Gardner Field, I wish to present you with these wings. Wings? Yes. I'm sorry the rest of the chicken got away. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, well, I can always use them for soup. Hiya, yes. Jackson. Okay, fellas, start beating them chow tongs together. Harris is here. <laughs> Thanks, you pretty things. You know something? You guys really know talent Phil, when you see Phil, keep quiet. Huh? <laughs> but these guys really know talent when they... Phil, will you... Let him talk! <laughs> Let him talk! <laughs> I don't mind letting him talk, but he doesn't have to be so hammy about it. Hammy, you're the one that gets all the receptions. Look what happened yesterday when we got off of the bus. Who took the vows? You did. I didn't get no welcome. What are you talking about? When we got here and I signed all those autographs, I sent every one of those soldiers over to get your autograph, too. You did that just to show off. You know I can't write. <laughs> well, Phil, I really forgot that you couldn't write. I didn't mean to embarrass you. You didn't, huh? Then why did you hide my rubber stamp? <laughs> Because you are messing up the whole bus with it, that's oh. why. <laughs> Just like a kid. And another thing, Jackson, I know the trick you played on me last year. What trick? Well, you switched rubber stamps on me, and for three weeks I was signing my name, Fragile This End Up. <laughs> What? Mary told me, Mary told me. <laughs> well, Phil, anybody who doesn't know how to spell his own name ought to be ashamed of himself. <laughs> Phil, do me a favor and play something, will ya? And now, fellas, come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? Did some silly guy come in here a while ago and present you with a pair of chicken wings? Yes, yes, but I, I threw them away. Oh. Well, would you mind telling me when you threw them? Why? Are you hungry? No, I'm the chicken. <laughs> what? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> That's what happens to a guy when he eats too much of those powdered eggs. Play, Phil, will you? Played by Phil Harris and his Buena Vista Beachhead Commando. <laughs> Say, Phil. Yeah. Phil, I thought you were supposed to sing in that number. Look, Jackson, I ain't singing no song. I got enough to do rehearsing the band, getting those big laughs, and driving the bus. <laughs> anyway, when are you going to hire a singer for this show? Well, Phil, I, I tried to get a singer last week. Oh, sure, sure, you tried. Why don't you tell him what happened Thursday night? Mary. Go ahead, Jack. Tell him how you tried to get John Charles Thomas. Mary, please. Well, if you won't tell him, I will. 
Listen, fellas, it was Thursday night. Mary, I don't want you to let her talk. Let her talk. <laughs> Thanks, fellas. Well, anyway, it was Thursday night, and Jack had invited me over to his house for dinner. There were just the two of us, and we were finishing eating when all of Gosh, Jack, it was nice of you to invite me over for dinner. Oh, that's all right, Mary. Here, will you have some mustard? Yes, thanks. Ketchup? Yes, thank you. Horseradish? Uh-huh. Here you are. What a dinner. Mustard, ketchup, and horseradish. <laughs> Don't worry, Mary. The surprise is in this casserole. Look. Gee, cold cut. Yep. <laughs> yes, sir. E. Cold cut. One cut for you and one cut for me. Yep. Uh, would you like your coffee now, Mary? Uh huh. Good. I'll ring for Rochester. Jack, don't you think it's about time you bought a regular dinner bell? Yes, Mary, but it's hard to get what you want these days on account of shortages. This makes a fine dinner bell. But, Jack, it doesn't look nice hitting an empty garbage pail with an old turkey bone. <laughs> you can't hit it with a cold cut. <laughs> anyway, no one notices it. Mr. Benny, did you ring for me, or did you just throw something in the garbage can? <laughs> I rang for you, Rochester. Rochester, uh, bring Miss Livingston her coffee, and I'll have a cup of tea. Sorry, boss, you'll have to take coffee, too. Why? The tea bags haven't come back from the laundry yet. <laughs> oh, darn it, I want a tea. Well, boss, I'll fix you the coffee so you'll like it. I'll add some brandy to it. I've got my own special recipe. Mmm, mmm, mmm. <laughs> Has it, uh, has it got a kick to it, Rochester? A uh, kick to it? Boss, do you know how coffee is good to the last drop? Uh-huh. Well, when I add just the right amount of brandy to it, the last drop picks up the cup and hits you over the head with it. <laughs> Rochester. One drink of my coffee and you sit around all night percolating. <laughs> Never mind. Just bring us some plain coffee. Yes, sir. Miss Livingston, would you like some dessert? Yes, I think I would. What have you got? Well, there's ice cream, rice pudding, custard, and chocolate pie. Gee, they all sound good. What would you suggest, Rochester? The custard is the best buy. The best buy? <laughs> Rochester, I'm not charging Miss Livingston for the dinner. Now bring some coffee and custard. Yes, sir. Say, Jack, it's getting close to Sunday. What are you going to do about a singer for your program? Well, Mary, I haven't given up hopes of getting Sinatra yet. Oh, I think you ought to forget about Sinatra. He has too much radio work already. He's on the hit parade, and beside that, he's got another show of his own. Oh, yes, One Man Famine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mary, one of my writers gave me that gag for last week's show, but I'd never used it anything that corny, you know. Yes, I know. Anyway, I'm not going to worry about him. I'll find a singer. Say, Mary, do you want to hear some good music? I bought a new record for my phonograph. It's about time. I'm getting tired of the Sheik of Araby. <laughs> I don't know, Mary. It's a pretty good number to dance to. <laughs> anyway, wait till you hear this new one. I'll wind up the phonograph. Oh, darn it. The horn keeps falling off. <laughs> there, it's fixed now. Here's a new record, Mary. Which side do you want to hear first? How do I know? What songs are on it? Well, on one side of the record is John Charles Thomas singing When My Boy Comes Home. And on the other side is Spike Jones playing I Kiss the Butcher's Daughter Till Her Old Man Put Up a Beef. <laughs> well, I'd rather hear John Charles Thomas. Okay, John Charles Thomas it'll be. Listen. <laughs> Said Mrs. McGinn to Mrs. O'Flynn, Someday when the war is won, Won't it be grand when the soldiers land And you go to meet your son? But 
you do when he marches through and you hear the people cheer? What do you do when he smiles at you? As your boy draws near. What will I do when my boy comes home? What will I do, you see? I'll tell the police if they're keeping the peace, they'd better keep out of my way. Isn't that wonderful? What a voice. What volume. Jack, Jack, what an idea. Why not get John Charles Thomas for your singer? Think of the dignity he would lend the program. Say, Mary, that would be terrific. Let's go over and see him right now. Oh, Rochester, get the car. We're going out. But, boss, I expected to have the night off. We're having a big New Year's party. A New Year's party? New Year's isn't for months yet. I uh, know, but tonight is basic training. <laughs> Never mind. Get the car and drive us over to Mr. Thomas's house. Okay. All right. Off of that cab, Rochester. Not so fast. Don't turn the corner so close. Look out for that man. Easy, you hit that Pontiac. The light's turning red on the corner. Put your hand out if you're going to turn. Watch out for that safety zone. Oh, this is the only automobile in town with a co-pilot. <laughs> Take over the controls, boss. I'll radio ahead for landing instructions. Rochester, will you? Hey, Mary. Mary, look, there's Fred Allen. Hello, Fred. Jack, that isn't Fred Allen. That's a soldier wearing a gas mask. <laughs> Gosh, I was just going to tell him how good he looked. <laughs> hey, slow down, Rochester. There's where John Charles Thomas lives. That house on the corner. <laughs> Rochester, you wait here. Come on, Mary. Yes? I'd, uh, I'd like to speak to Mr. John Charles Thomas. Uh, who shall I say is calling? Mr. Jack Jerk Benny. <laughs> Mary, please. Just tell him it's Jerk Benny. I mean, Jack Benny. <laughs> yes, sir. Come right in. Uh, Mr. Thomas is in the next room. Hey, listen, listen to that, Mary. 
Isn't that beautiful? Yes, and he's only gargly. <laughs> Must be a pleasure to hear him brush his teeth. <laughs> will, you, will you tell him I'm here? Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Thomas, Jack Benny is here to see you. Well, well, I'll come right out. Jack, hello, Mary. So what do I owe this pleasant surprise? Well, Mr. Thomas, getting right to the point, I'm looking for someone to sing on my radio program, and I thought someone as famous as you would be perfect for Jack, it. you compliment me. Oh, I mean it. I think your voice would lend dignity and prestige to my show. Jack, you flatter me. And I'm here to make you a financial offer. Here comes the insult. <laughs> Mary, please. Now, the uh, fact is, Charles... Charles? That's your middle name. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, now, uh, look, uh, uh, Mr. Thomas, I won't mince words. You see, Dennis Day worked for me, and after five years, I paid him $35 a week. I see. But naturally, I wouldn't expect an opera singer like you to work for that kind of money. Naturally. So instead of offering you $35, I'm willing to stretch it just a little bit. And give you... Pardon me for interrupting, Mr. Thomas. Yes, Martin? I'm leaving now for my night off. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And, uh, Martin, before you go, I'll give you your uh, weekly salary. Thank you, sir. Here you are. Twenty. Forty. Sixty. Seventy. Eighty. Ninety. A hundred dollars. Hmm. There you are, Martin. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, what was it you were saying, Mr. Benny? <clears throat> well, well. <laughs> on second, uh, on second thought, Mr. Thomas, I have a feeling that you and I can't get together. You couldn't even get together with his butler. <laughs> well, Mr. Thomas, I think I'd better go. I'm sorry I took up so much of your time. Now, wait a minute, Jack. I think I understand your predicament. You're stuck for a singer. Yes, sir. Well, I couldn't possibly take the job, but in order to help you out, I'll be very happy to come over and sing on one program. You will? One program? Did you hear that, Mary? Gee, that's swell, Mr. Thomas. What would you like me to sing? Oh, anything, anything. doesn't make any difference what you sing. Your voice is enough. And since you're accustomed to paying $35, I, I may as well take the money. Oh. <laughs> Is that all right with you? Well, I don't know, brother. What are you going to sing? <laughs> Come on. Come on, tell me. What are you going to sing? Well, I don't... I don't know, Jack. I don't have a very large repertoire. What? What was that you said? I said, I don't have a very large repertoire. Well, brother, from where I'm standing, you have the... I'm not going to say it! <laughs> Can you 
Rochester and their guests. The Benny Gang will be beaming your way again next week, same time, same station. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.